that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. Who has learned a lot this year? Is there anyone with their hand down? Because that's who has to do summer school. Is there anyone who learned a lot this year? Okay, so our students and our teachers have been working a long time with their director, Mrs. Lytle, on preparing an amazing play for you called <coughs> Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. How many of you have heard of that before? Probably. During the play, there's lots of funny stuff. But what happens if you start laughing out of control is then the lines that follow that are also very funny and everyone misses them. That is not fair. They work too hard and they deserve to have their lines heard. If there's anyone out of control, regardless of your age, I include you, grandparents. Anyone out of control, you will be removed from the cafeteria. Does everybody understand that? Yes. Do I want you to have fun? Yes. You know it. Do I want you to clap when it's the right time? Yes. And do we want to give them lots of encouragement? Yes. But using our best tiger rules, right? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. On we go with Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Chocolate, get your chocolate. no choice but to close his door, sending all of his factory workers home. Now you might think that that would be the end of Willy Wonka, but no siree, not him. After months, the factory began operating again, but nobody knew who was running the place. Nobody ever went in, nobody came out. Five golden tickets have been hidden under the ordinary wrapping paper of five ordinary Wonka bars. These five candy bars may be anywhere, in any shop, in any street, in any town, in any country in the world. So the five winners will tour Wonka's new factory and take home enough chocolate for the rest of his life. Four of the tickets have already been found. The question is, who will be the winner of the last golden ticket? But before that, shall we meet the four lucky winners? Augustus Gloop, where are you? Chocolate, chocolate, I love chocolate. Mm, I all the time. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. <laughs> Let's see now if our lucky winner number two is here. Violet, oh Violet Burgard. I'm a gum tour normally. But when I heard about these ticket things in Mr. Wonka's, I laid off the gum and switched to candy bars in the hope of striking it lucky. Now I'm back on gum. Am I interested that I've been chewing this piece right here for three months? I simply stick it at the end of my bedpost. Our third winner is Veruca Salt. Where are you, Veruca? What? Where is my golden ticket? I want my golden ticket. Mommy, oh, here it is. As soon as I found out about these tickets, I made Mommy go out and buy hundreds, no thousands. 
thousands, no hundreds of thousands. Now I can stop the tantrums, for now anyway. Lovely, isn't she? Now the fourth and final ticket so far was by Mike TV. Where are you, Mike? Of course I have a ticket, now leave me alone. I just want to watch TV. I watch all the shows every day. I like the Cowboys the best. Oh boy, it's the life. <laughs> but we have not yet met our most important character. But of course, we should leave these delightful children and go see how dear Charlie is. This is a story of an ordinary little boy named Charlie Bucket. He was not faster or stronger or more clever than the other children. His family was not rich or powerful or well connected. In fact, they barely had enough to eat. But Charlie Bucket was the luckiest boy in the entire world. He just didn't know it yet. Like that repulsive gloop boy. Ugh, or as beastly as that stinking bubble popping violet. <laughs> <laughs> or that spoiled little salt girl, she needs a spanking. Or <laughs> <laughs> living such a useless life as that TV boy. Hmm. Uh, as sure as I am that I'll be having cabbage soup tonight, I'm sure that some other beastly child will get that ticket. Hi, <laughs> everybody. Charlie! Charlie. Charlie. Oh. Mom. Oh. Dad. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> Grandma. Grandma. <laughs> Grandma Georgina. <laughs> Look at our poor boy. He worked so hard for such a little boy. He should have some time to play. Oh, not enough hours in the day with the four of you bedridden for the past 20 years. It takes a lot to keep this family going. Hey, Charlie, son, do you mind stepping out and getting me some cabbage for my, uh, cabbage soup? Sure thing, Dad. Someone dropped it, a whole dollar. It takes a second to decide what to do with the money. He runs to the candy man, for there is very little that Charlie loves more than chocolate. Uh, but I still have 
about 50 cents left. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll set the wrapper off slowly. Yeah. yeah. And Charlie could barely get the words out. I found the fifth going ticket. You know what? I did it. I did it. I really did it. I found the fifth going ticket. Oh. Oh. Greetings to you, the lucky finder of the golden ticket, from Mr. Willy Wonka. I shake you warmly by the hand, for now I do invite you to come to my factory to be my guest for a whole day. I, Willy Wonka, will conduct you around the factory myself, showing you everything there is to see. After one, when it's time to leave, you will be escorted home by a procession of large trucks, equal with all the chocolate you could ever eat. And remember, one of you lucky five children will receive an extra prize beyond your wildest imagination. Now, here are your instructions. On the 1st of February, you must come to the factory gates at 10 a.m. sharp. You're allowed to bring one member, member of your family to look after you. Until then, we won't go. The 1st of February? But that's tomorrow! Oh. Then there's not a moment to lose! Charlie! Wash your face! Scrub your toes! Brush your teeth! Comb your hair! We've got to go! And get that mud off of your pants! <laughs> the first thing we have to figure out is who's going to go with Charlie to the I factory. I will. I will take him. We're going? We're going. You leave it to me. Stand up straight, please. Well, this is it, folks. This is the big day. It's still a big day. 
on which Mr. Willy Wonka has promised to open his gates and shower gifts on the five of the winners. From all over the globe, people have gathered here waiting for the hour to strike, waiting to get a glimpse of that legendary magician, Mr. Willy Wonka. <coughs> <coughs> Are we here for nothing? I my math class for this. <laughs> <laughs> Please step forward. Step forward. Oh, Mike, up front. Up front, Mike. Up front. Uh, excuse us. Up front. Okay, good. Here. All right, we're out there now. Okay. Veruca, right. who's Mr. Salt? Veruca coming first. Veruca first. Give me up. Veruca first. Go ahead, sweetheart. Now it is said that Slugworth would give his front teeth for five minutes in Willy Wonka's inventing room. Welcome. It's nice to have you all here. I'm so glad you could come. This is going to be such an exciting day. We have lots planned here on my agenda. And yes, I hope you enjoy it. And I really think you will. Would you want to know our names? Uh, I can't imagine how that would matter at all. Come quickly for too much to see. Just drop your coats anywhere. Mr. Wonka, I'm by Beauregard. Well, I really don't care, Violet. The Thunder Road is going to win a special prize at the end. Well, you do seem confident, and confidence is key. I'm Ruka Salt. It's very nice to meet you, sir. Ruka, I always thought that was a type of war found on the bottom of your foot. Ha <laughs> I love your chocolate. Well, I can see that. Boy, I never expected us to have so much in common. Uh, and you're, you must be Mike TV, and you're just really happy to be here. Well. Uh, you're just lucky to be here, and the rest of you, though, you all must be there. Parents? Would you like I'm his mother. It? Sure thing. Well, then you should have brought some. Let's be <laughs> friends. Best friends. Well, this is to keep all the big chocolate flavor inside. Now, do be careful, my dear children. Don't lose your heads. Don't get overexcited. Just keep calm.
This was a room like none had ever seen before. It's beautiful! Wow! What? Oh yeah, it is very beautiful. Um, look at my meadow over there. Do you like my meadow? You can even try eating some of the grass. Go ahead. Please have a plate. Please do. You can eat the grass? Of course you can. Everything in this room is edible. Even unedible. But that's frowned upon in most in societies. That is known as cannibalism, my dear children. Uh, but go ahead. You can go ahead, eat, scoot, scoot. Come on, try everything. Go ahead. Why hold on to it? I just started a piece. Then I wouldn't be a champion. I'd be a loser like you. <laughs> Ugh, what a dirty, disgusting Yay. river. Ooh, that's rubbish. You've ruined your watershed, Wonka. It's it, polluted. It's chocolate. That's chocolate? Mm, that's chocolate. A chocolate river. That's the most fantastic thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Every drop of that ri ri uh, river is hot melted chocolate of the finest quality. The waterfall, though, is most important. No other factory in the world has their chocolate cut in by waterfall, my dear children. And you can take that to the bank, people. See those pipes over there? They suck up all the chocolate. They carry it away all over to the factory, thousands and thousands of gallons an hour. Daddy, I want to... Mommy. <laughs> Mommy, look over there. Over there by the waterfall. It's a little person. There's two of them. But where do they come from? Oh, there's more than two. <laughs> Who are they? Are they real people? Of course they are. They're Oompa Loompas. Oompa Loompas? Imported direct from Loompa Land. Because it's What? <laughs> Mr. Wonka, I teach math, science, Spanish, soon to be French teacher, we, oui. um, and math. And um, I'm here to tell you. Well, oh, I teach well, geography. Man. Hold on, hold on. Keep I going. teach geography. <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that, um, you know, that. Uh, well, well, then you know all about it. What a terrible country it is. Boy, I'll tell you, there's nothing but the lace, the, the desolate waste, and fierce, fiery beasts all over the place. And the poor little Oompa Loompas. Oh, they were so small and helpless, and they could get gobbled up right and left. A wangdoodle would eat ten of them for breakfast each day, and they wouldn't even think about it. So I said to them, come and live with me in safe, safety and peace, and stay away from all those wangdoodles and hornswogglers and snozwangers and the rotten Bernicius canids. Snozwangers? Rotten Bernicius kids? What kind of rubbish is that? I'm sorry, but all questions must be sent to me in writing. And so in the greatest of secrecy, I transported the entire population of Oompa Loompas right to my factory right here. Hey, Mommy, I want you to get me an Oompa Loompa. I want an Oompa Loompa right away. All right, Brooke, I'll get you one before the day is out. I want an Oompa Loompa now! <gasps> this is horrific. I need a bucket to drink it properly. Grandpa, look at Augustus. Augustus oh, got quietly this. sneaked down to the edge of the river. He was scooping the chocolate into his mouth as fast as he could. Augustus, please save some room for later, sweetheart. I already told you. Oh, Augustus, please don't do that. My chocolate must never be touched by human hands. Augustus, please don't do that. Augustus, please. I beg of you, Augustus. But Augustus was deaf to everything except his, the call of his enormous stomach. Stop in the name of love before you turn to fudge. Think it all over. <laughs> Man overboard. My chocolate! Oh, I'm driving a chocolate! Oh no, he can't swim, please save him! My chocolate, my beautiful chocolate! No, Augustus! Augustus! Fish me out! Oh no, somebody call the fire brigade! He can't swim a yard! Look, the Oompa Loompas! What are they doing? You gotta save them, please! Oh, no. Help! Police! Murder! Come on, Mr. Wonka! Please, just save my son! Oh, my God, I see him! I'm not going near that. It's disgusting. That makes me feel like I have to work out. What am I going to do? Oh, look! The Oompa Loompa. Well, I believe they're going to treat us to a little song. It's quite a special occasion, of course. 
Uh, they haven't had a fresh audience in many a moon, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Augustus Gloop, Augustus Gloop, the baker greedy and income boot. How long could we allow this beast to gorge and guzzle, feed and feast of this revolting boy, of course, was so unterribly vile, so greedy, foul, and infantile? Bravo, bravo, well done, well done. I dare say that all seemed rather rehearsed. <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. Oh, poppycock. Oh my goodness, where is my son going? Where is that pike go? Well, that pike, if this so happens, leads directly to a room where I could make the most delicious, delicious kind of strawberry flavored chocolate coated fudge. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me that my son's gonna be turned into whatever kind of fudge you were just yammering on about? And he's gonna be sold by the pound all over the world? No, 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 I never would allow it. That would taste just terrible. Could you imagine Augustus flavored chocolate fudge? Oh, dare you. Oh, oh no, I would buy it. And I wouldn't, it, and I wouldn't uh, well, I wouldn't want that at all. Uh, Uncle Lupus, come here, please. Lupus, I would like you to take Mrs. Gloop to the fudge room, okay? Help her find her son. Take a long stick and start poking around in the big chocolate mixing barrel, okay? You'll find him. Oh, that will be fine. Fine. <coughs> Mr. Wonka. Yes. Why would the Oompa Loompa's name already be in? The, uh, why would Augustus's name already be in the Oompa Loompa song unless? Improvisation. It is a parlor trick. It's so easy. Anyone can do it. You little girls, say something. Anything. Chewing gum. Chewing gum, chewing gum, okay. Chewing gum is really gross. Chewing gum I hate the most. See? Exactly what I just said. No, it isn't. Uh, I really, uh, you really shouldn't mumble. I really can't hear you, okay? Because I can't understand a word you're saying. Okay, now we must go on with the door. Let's go. Of course they're joking. Of course they're joking. Boy. You're all, you're all quite short, aren't you? Yeah, we're children. Well, that's no excuse. I was never as short as you. Let's go. Charlie stared around the gigantic room in which he now found himself. The place was like a witch's kitchen. All about him, black metal pots were boiling and bubbling huge, on huge stoves. The whole room was filled with steam and smelled rich and delicious. Inventing room. It looks more like a Turkish bath to me. Even if Swagbert did get in here, you won't be able to find anything. Shouldn't you be wearing rubber gloves? You'll have health inspectors after you. You know that, don't you? Inventions, my dear friends, is 93% perspiration, 6% electricity, 4% evaporation, and 2% butterscotch ripple. Wait a minute. Any good? Hmm. Wait a minute. That's 105%. Any good? Yes, excuse me. Time is a precious thing. I'll tell you that. Boy, never waste time. <laughs> And that's not bad. Very good thing 
Mommy, help? Mommy, help? <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to, silly boy. Well, that's exploding candy for your enemies. Great idea, isn't it? Not just ready yet, though. Uh, still a little weak. I think it needs to put a little more jelly night in it. I'll have to put that in it. What's that for? Well, it gives it a little kick. Hey, Mr. Wonka. <coughs> oh, let me show you. Thank you, thank you. See these? These are everlasting gobstops. These are for children who are given very little allowance money at all. You can suck on these all year, and it will never get any smaller. Isn't that neat? And these over here, these are hair toffee. You suck down one of these little boogers, and in exactly a half an hour, you'll have hair sprouting all over your little noggin. And you'll get a mustache and a beard. Who wants a beard? Who wants a beard? Who wants a beard? Uh, well, I'm sorry, I'm a little deaf in this ear. Can you say it a little louder? Who wants a beard? Well, beatniks for one, um, folk singers, motorbike riders, you name it. You know, all those jazzy, super hip, groovy guys. Um, it's in the fridge, Daddy-O. Are you hip to the jive? Find me a little skin, brother. Thank you, brother. All right, you know what I'm laying down? Unfortunately, the mixture just isn't quite right yet. Because uh, Lumpa Lumpa tried some one yesterday, and well, Lumpa Lumpa, oh, you look great, you look great. Who wants an everlasting gob stopper? Me! All right, I can only give you one if you solemnly swear to keep them for yourself and keep them as long as you live and never show them to another living soul. As long as you shall live. Agreed? Agreed. 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 I try to get two. Good, here you go. Here's a gob stopper for you, one for you, one for you. Hey, hey, she's got about two. Charlie. Charlie? Okay, and one for Charlie. Hey, she's she got two. Me. I want another one. Stop squawking, you twitch. Mikey's one. Mikey, you got one? Well, everybody has one, and one is what everybody shall get. Now, come along. Over here, I want you to follow me something, or show you something rather special. Mr. Wonka led the party over to a gigantic machine that stood in the very center of the inventing room. It was a mountain of gleaming metal. A mighty rumbling sound came from inside, and the whole machine began to shake uncontrollably. Click when the machine and the wizard stopped whizzing, and now there came a sort of sucking noise, then a tiny drawer opened, revealing a thin gray strip that looked like a piece of cardboard. You mean, that's it? Do you know what it is? It's gum, by gum, it's gum. Yeah, it's a stick of the most amazing and sensational gum in the whole wide universe. You know why? Do you know why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this gum is a full three-course dinner all by itself. Why would anyone want that? Well, it'll be the end of all kitchens and all cooks and all cooking. Just a little stick of Wonka's magic chewing gum, and that's all you will ever need for breakfast, lunch, or even dinner. The piece of gum happens to be this one, tomato soup, roast beef, and blueberry pie. It sounds great. It sounds weird. It sounds like my kind of gum. <laughs> oh, I'd rather you didn't. I'd rather you didn't do that. There's still one thing or two things that are... But before Mr. Wonka could stop her, she shot out her hand and grabbed the stick of gum, popping it in her mouth. At once, her well-trained jaws started chewing away like a pair of tongs. <laughs> this is concerning. I'm the world record holder in chewing gum. I'm not afraid of anything. Oh, is it, sweetheart? It's great. Tomato soup. I can feel it running down my throat. Well, yes, spit it out. Young lady, I think you'd better... It's changing. Roast beef and baked potato. Potato. Crispy skin and butter. My little girl's gonna be the first person ever to have a chewing gum meal. Yeah, but I'm just a little concerned about... Blueberry pie and ice cream. That's the part. What a terrible, peculiar sight she was. What's happening to her nose? It's turning blue.
closer to the dessert part. And that blueberry pie does it. Um, I'm terribly sorry. Mother, what's happening to me? She's swelling up like a blueberry. <laughs> well, I tried it on like 20 Oompa Loompas and each one ended up as a blueberry. It's just weird. A blueberry? But well, I can't have a blueberry for a daughter. How is she supposed to compete? <laughs> Mr. Wonka. Dear friends, we surely all agree there's almost nothing worse to see than some repulsive little bum who's always chewing chewing gum. So please believe us when we say that chewing gum will never pay. Oompa Loompas, come here, please. I would like you to roll Miss Beauregard into the boat and take it to the juicy room at once, please. Thank you. The, the, the juicy room? Well, what are they going to do to her there? Well, they're going to squeeze her. They're going to squeeze her like a little pimple. Oh, boy. we got to squeeze all that juice out of her immediately. Mother, help me. Come on, let's boogie. Without the bow, we'll have to move more double time now. Lots to see. we got to keep on schedule. Let's go. Far too much to see. Special prize. You get your Well, the best kind of surprise or the prize is a surprise. Will Violet always be a blueberry? No, yes, well maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, but that's what you get with chewing gum all day long. It's just disgusting. Find your bottoms, please. Why do I make gum? Again, I, you're mumbling too much. I, uh, boy, it's really starting to annoy me. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Keyholes and sometimes jets of colored streams 
shot out from the cracks underneath. Something very unusual in here. Bubbles, bubbles everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Well, just yet. What's it making? Well, fizzy lifting drinks, right here. They'll fill you with gas, and you the gas is so terrifically light it would float you right up to the ceiling. Oh, isn't it high? Gosh. But I dare, I shouldn't sell it just yet. It's still way too powerful. Come on, let's try some, please. Oh, let us try some. Don't be mean. No, no, absolutely not. There'd be children floating around all over the place. So I want you to come along now. Come with me. Leave that stuff alone. No hanging about. You're going to be wild about this next room. Come on down. Let's take a drink, Charlie. Nobody's watching. Yeah. A small one will hurt us. Hmm, not bad. Well, stop it. Yeah, you're right, Charlie. I can't understand why. Oh, I feel terribly strange. Oh, oh, oh! Because only squirrels can get the whole nut almost out every single time. You see, they tap one with their little knuckles and to make sure it's not bad. Oh, oh look, I think he's found a bad nut. They watch the little squirrels as he tapped the walnut shell with his knuckles. He cocked his head to one side listening intently. Then he threw the nut over his shoulder into a large hole in the floor. Mommy, I want a squirrel. Get me one of those squirrels. I want one. Little oh, Pitya, you have many marvelous cats. All I got at home is one pony and two dogs and four cats and six rabbits and three turtles and two parrots and four green parakeets and a silly old hamster. I want a squirrel. All right, pet. I'll do what I can to get you one before the day before. But I don't want any old squirrel. I want a trained squirrel. Well, all right then, Mr. Wonka. How much for one of these trained squirrels? Name your price. Oh, they're not for sale. She cannot have one. Mommy. Mr. Wonka, name your price. They're not for sale. Who says I can't? Mm -hmm. Mommy. Who says I can't have one? The man with the funny hat. Well, if you won't get me one, I'll get one myself. Veruca. Oh, little girl. Veruca, come back here, sweetheart. Little girl, don't touch that squirrel. It'll make him crazy. Veruca! I'll have you! The moment she entered the room, 100 squirrels stopped what they were doing and turned their heads and stared at her with small black beady eyes. <laughs> Veruca! Veruca, come back here! Veruca! Let's find the key. 
Television chocolate. One day it occurred to me, hey, if television could break up a photograph in tiny million pieces and then whiz it through the air and then show it on the TV, 
and it comes out at the other end on the TV. Why can't I do the same thing with chocolate? Wait, why can't I? I'll tell you. Send in a real chocolate bar through the television, all ready to be eaten. That would be amazing. Oh, that sounds impossible. It is impossible. You don't understand anything about science. First off, <coughs> the difference between waves and particles. Duh. Second, the amount of power it would take to convert energy and matter would be like nine atomic bombs. Mumbler, you are a mumbler, seriously. I can't understand a single word you say all the time, okay? Okie dokie. I shall now send a bar of chocolate from one end of the room all the way to the other by television. Bring me the chocolate. Thank you. It's got to be real big because you know on TV how you can film a regular sized person and they come out looking just this tall, okay? Same basic principle. Hey, it's the Hershey's bar. Mumbler! <laughs> Oh my, my, my. Just keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. Always wanted to say this. <laughs> it's gone. I told you. Now that bar chocolate is now rushing over our heads in millions of tiny, tiny, tiny little pieces. Come over here. Come on. Come up in front over here. Watch the screen. Watch it. Here it comes. Now take a look at it. Just a picture on a screen. Scaredy cat, you take it. Go on, just reach out, grab it, and look. Holy uh -huh. buckets! Eat it. Go on, it'll be delicious. It's the same bar. It's just gone a little smaller by the journey, that's all. Mine. 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 Not mine. <laughs> How is it, Charlie? It's terrific! It's a miracle! So imagine if you're sitting at home watching TV, and on the television screen the flashes and a voice will say, Wonka's chocolate bars, the best in the world. And if you don't believe us, try one for yourself, and you simply reach out and grab one and take it and eat it. How about that? What about people? People? Why would I want to send a person? They really don't take too well. Don't you realize what you invented in a teleporter? The most important invention in the history of the world, all you think about is chocolate? Mike, calm down. Calm down. Come on, I think Mr. Wonka knows what he's talking about. No, he doesn't. You think he's a genius, but he's an idiot, but I'm not. <laughs> but he was already off and running. There's no stopping him now. The crazy boy rushed on, and he reached the enormous camera. Mike? Uh oh Mike? Mike? He's gone. Well, let's go check the television and see what we got. I'm sure, I sure hope no part Mike? of him gets left behind. What, what do you mean? Mike? Well, sometimes only half the little pieces find their way through. Uh, if you had to choose one half of your son, which half would it be? <laughs> what kind of question is that, Mr. Wonka? No need to snap, just a question. Hey, let's try every channel here. I'm, I'm starting to feel, though, a little anxious. There he is. I'm a TV star. Wait till the kids back home hear about this. <laughs> oh, there's not gonna have anyone at home hearing about this, my, my. Where are you taking me? I don't want to go in there. Just be quiet. Hey, let me out. It's dark in here. <laughs> Umpa Lumpus, come here, please. Well, fortunately, small boys are extremely springy and elastic. Let me out, Mom, or I'll gnaw my way out. 
<laughs> Not in my Michael Kors pocketbook. Now stop it. Behave. Well, I think we'll put him in the special taffy pulling machine. That should do the trick. I'm warning you, Mom. There's a nail file in here. Taffy. <laughs> Uncle Lopez, to the taffy pulling room. You'll find the boy in the mother's purse. Be extremely careful. You don't let me out. I'll smear your lipstick all over everything. Oh, no. <laughs> Alicia's new lipstick, leave it alone, Mike. What do you mean, the taffy pull room? No, no, no. Oh, oh, I will not. No, you're not responsible. I will not hold you responsible. Go ahead. Oh, no, Mike. I'm plastic Mike. over it. Mike, leave that alone. That's my $10 bill. Put it back. <laughs> important thing we've learned so far as children are concerned is to never, never, never let the tear your television set or better still just don't install the idiotic thing at all. Well, and now my dearest lady, it's time to say goodbye. Pardon is such sweet sorrow. Um, no, no, no need to speak. For some moments in life there are just no words. Run along now. Adieu, adieu. Pardon is just such sweet sorrow. All right, on with the tour. Let's go, people. There's so much time left, and now, how many children are left? Mr. Wonka, Charlie's the only one left now. You mean you're the only one? Yes. Well, what happened to the others? Oh, my dear boy, but that means you've won. I do congratulate you. I really do. Congratulations. I'm absolutely delighted for you. I had a hunch, you know, right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. Well done. Now we mustn't dilly or dally. So much to do. So much to see. Oh, invoices, bills, letters, and so forth. Oh, we've got to be busy now. Hey, I must answer that note from the Queen. Mr. Walker, what's going to happen to the other kids? Augustus, Veruca. Oh, oh, my dear boy, I promise you they'll all be quite all right. Oh, when they leave here, they'll be completely restored to their normal terrible old selves. But maybe they'll be a little wiser for the wear. Anyways, don't worry about them. Hey, what do we do now, Mr. Wonka? Oh, well, uh, I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Excuse me uh, for not showing you up, but I got a lot of work to do. You can just go straight up the stairs, find your way. I'm terribly busy, whole day wasted. Goodbye to you both. Goodbye. What happened? Did we do something wrong? I don't know, Charlie, but I'm gonna find out. Mr. Wonka? Uh, I'm extraordinarily busy, sir. I just wanted to ask you about the chocolate. The lifetime supply of chocolate for Charlie. When does he get it? He doesn't. Why not? Because he broke the rules. What rules? We didn't see any rules, did we, Charlie? Wrong, sir. You broke a rule under section 37B of the contract right here. It states quite clearly that all offers shall become null and void if, and you can read this for yourself if you'd like, if I, the undersigned, shall forfeit all rights and privileges, privileges and license herein and herein and contain, etc., 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 fax mentis, incidium, gloria culpum, blah, 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 etc., etc., <laughs> memos, memos, by bona pata. It's all there in black and white. Crystal clear. You stole fuzzy lifting drinks, so you get nothing. You're yeah. a crook. You're a cheat and a swindler. That's what you are. You're making my hair fall out. <laughs> you built up a little boy's hopes and dreams, and you smashed them all to pieces. You're an inhuman monster. I said good day. Come on, Charlie. Let's get out of here. I'll get even with him if it's the last thing I do. If Slugworth wants a gobstopper, he'll get one. And break everything, too. Where are you going? Where are you going? Mr. Wonka. What is it, Charlie? What about my lifestyle time supply of chocolate? 
Charlie, my boy, Charlie, you have done it, Charlie. You have done it. Charlie, you've given me the gobstopper back, okay? Now, what happens is I knew you would win, and you have now shown me that you are the winner. You did it, you did it, and I knew you would. You've shown some kindness. You've given me back the gobstopper. Charlie, I forgive you. I forgive you for putting you through this. Forgive me, please, will you? Come in, Wilkinson. Mr. Wilkinson, come in. Charlie, meet Mr. Wilkinson. Slugworth! Pleasure. No, that's not Slugworth. He works for me. For you? I had to test you, Charlie. And you passed the test. You won. You won what? The jackpot, my dear sir. The grand and glorious jackpot. Chocolate? The chocolate, yes, the chocolate. But that's just the beginning. You have won the entire chocolate factory. won the whole entire chocolate factory, okay, we now have to get on, okay, we now have got to get on, we have so much time and so little to do, strike that, reverse that, this way please, we'll take the Wonkavator, step in Charlie, Grandpa sir, this is the great glass Wonkavator. It's an elevator. It's a Wonkavator. An elevator can only go up and down, but a wonk elevator can go sideways and slant ways and long ways and back ways. And front ways? And square ways and front ways. And any other ways that you can think of. I can take it to any other room in the factory just by pressing one of these buttons. Any of these buttons. Just press a button. And zing, you're off. And up until now, I've pressed them all except one. This one, Charlie. Go ahead, Charlie. You press this one. Me? Hey, here we go. Hold on tight. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. Faster and faster. If we don't pick up enough speed, we'll never get through. Get through what? Aha! Uh -huh. You mean we're going? Yes, we're going up and out. But this roof is made of glass. It'll shatter into a thousand pieces. We'll be cut to ribbons. Probably, but everybody, hold on. Here it comes. So suddenly, crash! The most tremendous noise of splintering wood and broken tiles came from yeah. directly above their heads. Sure enough, the lift had shot right up through the roof of the factory and was rising to the sky like a rocket. Precious candy secrets to you. That's why you handed out the golden tickets. That's right. So the factory is all yours, Charlie. You can move in immediately. And me? Absolutely. What about the rest of the whole family? They can come on too. I want you to bring them all to the factory. But Charlie, don't forget what happens to a man who suddenly got everything he wanted. What happened? He lived happily ever after. Congratulations, Charlie. Good day for sunrise. 
Shit.